Today's lesson is going to be on chemical kinetics. Um, in this lab, we're going to use uh, our fluorescence experiments explicitly to look at kinetics, but it really comes up in a variety of um, types of analytical experiments. And I'll talk a little about the end. There's lots of things you could do to look at kinetics. Um, and uh, I want to make sure we go over this because, again, the title of this class is Laboratory and Thermodynamics and Kinetics. Uh, so you should be learning some of these kinetics in your um, lecture class, and we're going to augment that with kind of... Um, a little bit of an experiment on looking at kinetics in uh, this lab, this class. Okay, so let's think about a general reaction. All right, great. Uh, so we have um, A plus B goes to C, and we'll put in some X, which is going to be a catalyst, perhaps, to help it go, right? Um, and so we can write a reaction rate constant. And if we were to do that, we would say the rate is equal to K, some rate constant, times the concentration of A to the M power times the concentration of B uh, to the uh, N power times the concentration of X to the P power, let's say. So it depends, the reaction rates, right, if we're going to go this way, depends on the concentration of the reactants and a catalyst. We're not going to talk too much about catalytic reactions, quite frankly, uh, in this class, but I want to put them in there in the initial um, uh, uh, thing. Okay, so what's M or N? The answer that is wrong, it is not necessarily A and B. Could be. Uh, but you're so used to writing equilibrium equations that people are like, oh, I know what that is. M and N are what's called the reaction orders. So they tell you about what order it is in the reaction. So it does have, not have anything to do with the balanced equation. Um, and as I said, that's the biggest mistake people make. Oh, this is 2, so this, you know, it has to be A squared. Uh, we've drilled equilibrium coefficients into you so much, but in this case, that's not true. Um, and then what's the reaction order? It has to be, they have to be experimentally determined. So again, in our UV vis experiment, um, uh, um, we can do this, uh, and so you can experimentally determine um, the reaction um, constant. K, again, is a rate constant. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about it, but you can pull that out again from the experiment. And it's going to tell you about all different kinds of things, right? It's going to depend on temperature, concentra um, not concentration, because that's in other things, the solvent that you're looking in. All the other kind of experimental conditions get racked up um, into K. Okay, so let's look at reaction coefficients for a second. It's actually pretty easy to derive the reaction rate orders. So the order, uh, if we're going to do a first order, then the rate is just equal to K times A, right? A to the 1 is just A. We're going to do a second order, then the rate is going to be equal to K times A squared. There's an alternative, actually, second order reaction that could be along, and that is this. K is equal to A times B. Now, these are first order in A and B, right, because each of these is just to the one, but it's second order overall, meaning it depends on two concentrations. Uh, so it could be this or it could be that. Um, there actually can be a zero order as well. Um, and so the rate is constant, right? It doesn't depend on the concentration of anything. Um, and so you can get zero order. Um, and you can get third and fourth and fifth order. We just won't do all of those um, today. Uh, but these are the kind of common uh, rate expressions. Um, and so what we want to be able to do is take these rate laws then and get them to something usable. And something usable is probably concentration, right? What's the concentration of A that I have? How can I relate that back? 
um, to rate. Um, and so rate, I haven't really defined that for you. But we can look at it as this, the change in the concentration of A with time, those just used to be brackets, uh, for that. And because we're going to be using up A, it's going to be a minus um, uh, sign, because A is disappearing over time. So minus dA dt then is going to equal to K times A. Let's do the first order. And so then we have to solve that equation. Okay, so let's get it over like this. The A, I'm going to separate my variables. So over A is equal to K um, times dt, right? And I can then integrate these. The integral of something 1 over something uh, ends up being the natural log. And so I end up with this. At the natural log of A is equal to minus kt. Now when am I going to evaluate those between? I'm going to be evaluating it between some starting initial value of A, right, and whatever the current value of A is. Uh, time will start at 0 and we'll go to t. And so if we do that, um, we'll end up with uh, this expression. The natural log of A over A0. I skipped a step here. Natural log of A minus the natural log of A0, it actually turns out, if you remember your log rules, it's a thing that is equal to minus kt. And so uh, we can solve this for A, and if we do that, right, we get A is equal to A0 times E to the minus kt. Um, all right, so that's our first order. I keep forgetting my brackets. That's fine. Uh, so this is our first order rate constant that says that the, con the amount of A that we had depends on the initial amount times e to the minus kt. Um, so it's an exponential decay of, um, over time, right? So the concentration of A over time decays exponentially. All right, so that's not so bad, first order rate constant. Let's do our second order rate constant. Alright, so here's the second order rate constant. Uh, again, minus dA dt, I'm going to quit with the brackets because they're annoying me, uh, is equal to k times the concentration of A squared. Uh, so same rate that now, right, if I separate my variables, I'm going to get a 1 over x squared kt. I'm going to integrate them, same thing, from A0 to A, from 0 to t. Uh, the integral of 1 over x squared, right, uh, ends up being minus the 1 of x. We haven't done integrals in a while. And so we end up getting this 1 over a, if I put in my values, minus 1 over a, 0 is equal to kt. So if we solve that one for a, we would get a is equal to a0 over 1 plus kt times a0. Uh, and so that's the, um, this is the uh, overall equation. So you see we kind of have a 1 over relationship here um, where a depends on a 1 over um, uh, um, uh, reaction. All right, let's do the zero order real quick. I'll erase our math. Um, so again, minus dA dt is equal to k because there's no concentration of A. And if we integrate these between A and A0, zero, zero uh, and t, we just end up getting this a minus a0 is equal to kt, or a is equal to um, a0 minus kt. I think minus over there. Um, all right, so 
um, this is what we get out for zero order. So it turns out that each of these has a plot that kind of goes with it. Uh, and so what you can do is plot them to see which order um, works best. So if we plot concentration versus time, we're going to plot it well in three different ways. So I'm going to try with my colors here. Uh, so let's call zero order green. So zero order, we'll try green uh, for that, should be linear with time, right? A here is linear with time, there's a constant. Uh, but zero order is linear with time. It turns out that neither, um, and these graphs I'll put up on the collab site, neither first order nor second order ones are very linear. So we'll call our blue first order and our red the second order. So you can tell if you make that plot uh, if it's uh, zero order. All right, so I told you the exponential decay was first order. So for first order then, let's make a plot of natural log of concentration of A versus time. Right, so for a first order reaction, which we'll call blue, that then should be linear. But for the second order, we're going to get, and again, kind of a funky plot. And for the zero order, we're going to get another funky plot, but they're not going to be linear. Um, and so uh, if it's first order, it should be linear natural log um, versus time. Okay, so the last plot then for second order that we can make. Uh, ends up being 1 over the concentration versus time. And then not surprisingly now, right, because we have this sub equation over here, 1 over concentration. Um, you see, it's easier to see it here. 1 over the concentration of A, right, versus time uh, is linear. Uh, and so we see that. And again, the first order and the second order um, aren't Uh, and now, uh, the first order and the second order look kind of funky. The first order, sorry, looks like that, and the zeroth order might look something like this. Again, I'll put the real plots up on uh, line for you to see. But I want you to know that you can do these plots to see which ones are linear um, and determine the kinetics um, using that. Now, a lot of times, um, uh, people um, will talk about half-life. Right, so half-life is just the time uh, to get to where, right, 50% is gone. Um, and so for the first order, you would get the natural log of one half uh, is equal to minus kT. Uh, so T ends up being 0.693 over K. But you can solve those for any of them. Uh, again, I don't know that it's really worth memorizing, but you put a half in, half of a zero, basically, uh, and for that you can solve that. All right, so let's end by talking about ways to measure kinetics. Basically, every experiment can be used to uh, measure kinetics. The biggest question is, what time scale do you want to work on? Uh, and can your instrument measure on that time scale? As long as your instrument can measure on that time scale, you know, anything that we do that can monitor concentration can be used for kinetics. Some of the more popular ones and things that uh, you might see in our lab are UV vis, right? And so in this case, we usually measure absorbance. And so if you're undergoing some sort of chemical reaction, um, you can imagine, let's say, we're undergoing this chemical reaction. A plus B uh, is C. And let's say that C, the product, absorbs. But A and B don't uh, absorb very much, right? So then as time goes on, we might get curves that look like this. This might be the initial curve, and then we get more absorbance and more absorbance, right, um, as time goes on. 
So your signal would increase with time. But you could do this reaction, right, where we would do A plus B goes to C, but now if A is the one whose absorbance we're monitoring, right, it would be, oh, that's time zero, and then over time, right, uh, as time increases, um, the signal goes down. Uh, so as time increased, the signal decreased. So I don't want you to get in your head that you always have to see it go up. Lots of times when people are measuring kinetics, they're measuring the decay of something um, as well. What else can you do? Fluorescence. So you can measure the fluorescence intensity. It's equal to K times whatever the... Um, intensity of the light is um, uh, times the uh, molar absorptivity of your um, uh, thing times the amount absorbed. Uh, let's, let's do these constants again. So this is the intensity of the light. Phi is called quantum yield. So quantum yield relates how many molecules you excite actually give off a photon. And so in the fluorescence lecture, we talk about how most, elect most molecules that you excite don't actually give off a, a photon. So quantum yields are usually quite low. And right, this should be um, familiar, hopefully. This is Beer's law, right? This is the amount absorbed, where Epsilon is the molar absorptivity, B is the path length, and C is the concentration. All right, so that's fluorescence, right? And so you can see that fluorescence is related to concentration. Um, and similar to the UV vis uh, examples I gave you, you could either monitor a product where the product was fluorescence, or you could monitor a reaction where the reactants were fluorescence, and you would see the reaction goes away. Um, if you're doing a quenching experiment, right? You're starting with something that's fluorescent, and then you're watching the fluorescence decrease. And so in our lab, uh, we're going to do a fluorescence quenching experiment, look at some enzyme kinetics uh, using that, and that's going to be using um, these type of things.